I hope you can bear with me. My voice is kind of going with this changing climate because I'm used to it where it's nights and warm in Fresno. It's kind of cold up here. But first of all is that I would like to thank Barney uh, Haven and Major for inviting me to this conference to speak. Uh, it's really exciting and I think that we need to play a part in this thing. But first of all is that I'm Will Scott. I'm the current, uh, current uh, president of African American Farmers. I am also a farmer. Also, I have uh, some history. Um, I would like to, uh, I think there's a, supposed to be a print at this time. Uh, oh, as you can see, I'm outstanding in my field. <laughs> so, <laughs> okay, my, my relationship and association with farming goes back many years. Uh, as far as I can trace it back to, I can take it back to my great-grandparents. Uh, after the Emancipation Proclamation was passed, they left uh, the state of South Carolina and they migrated to Texas. Uh, they were storekeepers. When they raised their family, my grandfather got married and he became uh, a sharecropper. He got in a dispute in Texas and he moved into Oklahoma and that's where my father was born and he, he participated into the a uh, sharecropping system. I think that you will probably understand the sharecropping system, how it works. To put it bluntly is that in, initially African American was indebted to a person. This system indebted you to the land that was owned by this person. So reality is you, you're still there. But it was a system where they had to survive too, is that if you could imagine uh, that many people being free with nowhere to go, no agencies to say, okay, we can help you relocate to do so. They were more or less on their own. This was a system how most of them survived. I was made part of this system, I guess, up until I was five years old. And when my grandfather took me to town to take some, uh, some uh, uh, cotton that we had picked, he took it to a place, uh, I guess it was a gin, and the man gave him a piece of paper. He was supposed to take this piece of paper and give it to a man at a store. He gave it to the man, and the man pulled off a ledger, and he had a, what they call a tab. He took this figure that my grandfather gave, and he looked at it, and he says, Amos, you almost got off the books. Well, I was a kid at that time, is that uh, I was interested in numbers. My dad, we used to play games like hide and seek where you count, you know, two, four, six, eight, five, ten, 20 and stuff like that. So I learned how to count. I learned how to do multiplications. So I knew how to figure. I looked at the figures that the man had and what my, my grandfather gave, and I, and, I, and, I, and I told him, I said, Grandpa, I said, he owes you money. And my grandfather <laughs> said, he does? He said, yeah, he came over. He looked at it. So he, he, took, the, he took the figures and he told the man, he says, okay. So he left and he went and bought me. At that time, is that, you know, when your grandfather's going to buy you something, you try to pick out the biggest thing that you can find. <laughs> so I picked out a bag of marshmallows. <laughs> he bought me a bag of marshmallows, and then he brought me, a, at that time, we, we loved uh, red soda water. He brought me red soda water. So he got me in the wagon, we were driving back, and he kept looking at me, you know, and I kept eating these marshmallows, and I got really sick, you know. <laughs> but two weeks later, my grandfather moved off this land. The sharecropping, he was out of the sharecropping system, because the system works as this, if you was on the tab, you couldn't leave the land. And that was, and that was enforced by the law, uh, law enforcement. Uh, this was uh, during World War II. Uh, my father, my, my, I had an uncle that was in the service. He came back home and he went to California. He enticed my father to come to California. He went and then he sat back and, and, and we went to California. When we arrived, we arrived in, in California. It was in August, just in time to cut grapes. And we was introduced to grape cutting. At that time, you can appreciate this, is that they paid you five cents a tray. If you stayed with this worker until it was paid, uh, completed, you got six cents a tray. I'm from a large family. My mother had 15 babies by one man. So we was a big family. So we, we, you know, during that time, we made a little money, so we survived. But the thing, too, is that to take you back with my relationship and association with agriculture goes, like I said, back to that point. When we got here, is that... Most of African Americans was, uh, was told to get away from farming because of the slavery connotation. So we got an education. I got an education. 
But there's something inside, too, is I think when you develop a, a, a love for the land, you know, it's, it's there. So when I retired from the telephone company, I jumped uh, out of the skillet into the fire. I became a farmer. <laughs> and farming, as you know, is hard work. You have to love it to do it. But I love it because one or two things is that I love food. And I think, too, is that uh, Afro-American has to play a part in this agricultural system. If you look at the statistics that, uh, that was said that, you know, one point something percent of the farmers in this nation is Afro-American. If you look in the state of California, which is a multi-billion dollar uh, industry, we represent less, less than a half a percent. If you're looking at 81,000 farmers in California and there's only, say, less than 400, you know, that's not, that's not that many. And there are various reasons why there are not that many, but I won't go into those things too. But I, at, at this point, is, is that the organization I belong to was formed in 1998. It was after the class lawsuit was filed against the USDA. We met as a group and then we formally organized and we became the African American Farmers of California. And our mission is this, is that we have to participate in this food system because food is important. It's vital. I contend this is that the probably next crisis we have will be concerning food. Not only the quality of the food, but also the availability of food. The, the, this nation, a nation that to me is, is judged by how, it, one, it takes care of its, its infants and children. Two is how we take care of our elderly people. And I'm concerned that because I'm, I'm one of those elders now, you know, and, and I like food and I want to eat. But we need to make sure that we have it. And to do this, the African Americans, the plight that we have is similar to what has happened to all small farmers. If you look in terms of civilization, we owe civilization to farming. Because in the beginning, when man, all he did on his every waking hour was looking, daylight hours, looking for food. At night, he spent time hiding from the man, who, uh, the animal who was looking for him for food, you know. <laughs> so when man found that at the season, that there were places he could go, and there was food, he was able to sit there and, 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 and stay for a while. When, when a man, when you eat and stuff like that, you sit around in a group of people, a lot of things come up. You start discussing business, you start talking politics, and all the other stuff. So they should start at that point. Now we're at the point, too, is that how do we sustain ourselves? And, and the African-American farmers today is in the same plight as all the small farmers. How do we sustain that? The more values that it, this exists in this country, whether you own a farm or you're in, your, in the big corporate office, those more values originated from the farm, I contend. It's how we deal with each other, how we feel about each other. Those values it, it came from the farm. So we have to work out a way to, to sustain that. And, then, and some of the things that I see that I'm optimistic about too is that we got this program on that buy local and stuff like that. The small farmer fits into that because he is local. He can't afford to ship his stuff anywhere because the stuff he grows is, is, is going to be bought local. So we have to infuse it into it because I don't think that we should completely cover the state of California in asphalt and concrete and not provide some space for us to grow our vegetables because I, we, we love to eat. We need to eat. And, and food is a commonality that brings all of us together because as we were sitting out there eating, we was at peace with, with each other. When this world is, is, is full, to me is that the most irrational human being on this earth would be a person who is starving to death. He need food. And it, it, we don't have to go, it don't take long to go from being sane to insane when you're searching for food. So we have to make sure we get that. But I, I don't know how much, oh, okay, we are. But anyway, what I'd like to conclude is this is that I think that it's a collaborative effort that we have to work together in order to, one, we need to sustain the small farmer. Big corporation can take care of themselves. They're going to be there. We need them also. But we need to sustain the small farmer because that's a way of life. And also, we need to come together, the people. The mentality of the United States now is that uh, we have people who have brilliant minds. We have access to, uh, with the computer and the internet, we have access to each other. Information is no longer hidden. You can't hide the truth anymore. So we need to come together and say, okay, these are things that we need to do. We need to come together because we need to be able one, to eat. We need to be able to live, live I guess, in the society in a peaceful manner. Uh, I think there was another, another side, too, is that I think they showed about the, uh, the sharecropping system. Uh, the original farmers in this country was African-American. 
we got away from it, but we need to come back to it, and we are coming back to it. We have a small number in California, but we are coming back, and we are ready to work with this. <laughs> we have a, a food for everyone. I thank you for the, for the moment, and let's conclude. Thank you.